All right, what's good, Hot Squad? And welcome back to my Hall Baker Recap Marathon. So we're gonna check out Casper's recent recap of Halloween. Yes, the classic, the original Halloween. And this is how recap is called. When Michael Myers started Eternal Beef with his sister. So it's been so long, so long since I've seen the first, the one that started all, the classic Halloween. So I'm really excited to see this. So, and also I did saw he did another one with the reboot Halloween, which I will do very soon. I will do that recap very soon to react to that. But I'm doing the ones that I missed out on because I've been, I've been not doing this for two weeks because now I have so much, so much important stuff to do around around me personally. Personally, so hot squad for ado, we're gonna check out Casper's hallway recap right here, right now. Let's check it out. It's about to go down. Hit it, hit it, hit it, hit it, get it, get it, get it. Get it. Get it. We start off in Haddonfield, Illinois, Halloween night, 1963, the year John F. Kennedy got Damn. sniped mm. the march on Washington with Martin Luther King and Wait, Dennis. Wait, what? Is that dude Dennis? If I say it was okay, oh, no. Nah. Oh, no. Nah. I was expecting that, man. The night an absolute demon was born. Judith Myers. We <laughs> see Michael Myers. Myers creeping around the side. When most kids was out trick-or-treating, Michael was watching his sister get freaky. Yes. Little bro is clearly sick. And that's when his sister boyfriend tells her to let's go upstairs. And when I tell you, Michael <laughs> just went around the side of the house and walked inside and the nigga was already leaving. Bro really got his two strokes <laughs> and dipped. But being a two-pump chump saved his life. Don't feel bad, little bro. And that's when Michael walks upstairs. Shit took mad long, not gonna lie. 50 years later and bro still walks the same as he yes. did when he was six. Seriously, now, though. Consistency. Yeah. King said it could relate because he's consistently <laughs> dropping ass. He walks in and picks up the mask her boyfriend was wearing earlier and walks over to her. And little bro starts unloading a clip in her, stabbing her repeatedly, leaving his sister looking like Victor's ass. Damn. And then he just walks out the house. I know she's sick right now watching a kill cam like this. What is he fuck me for? <laughs> his parents pull up and his dad just snatches the mask off his face and he's just standing there, unfazed. In mind, hmm. body, and spirit, he's a demon now. <laughs> it can't be a coincidence that Diddy was bored a few years after this. Damn. Incidents? I, I think, think not. not. Niggas out here trading an evil secret formula and his parents just looking at him like, bro, you don't see that Eddie Murphy gap size knife you got? <laughs> this shit is like every anime protagonist. Straight yeah. bad parenting. After yeah. Michael greased his sister in the worst way, we fast forward to Smith Grove's Illinois the night before Halloween. They're driving to Illinois State Hospital to go pick up Michael and she telling him like, damn, you really don't want him in the outside world. And he looking at her like, really about to Man, what the fuck is you what talking about? What the fuck was that? I'm sorry, man. No, I'm Because he's been face to face with that demon before. Bro even decided at the age of 13, he had to go. Because when they pull up, they see Fousey Tube and a bunch of patients walking around. And this can only mean one thing. That everybody in that hoe is requesting Billy Jean up next. They pull up to the gate and he gets out. And that's when Michael starts crawling on top of the car. And her and her Floyd Mayweather type brain cells decides, let's just roll the windows down so I can get a better look. Really? You see that? <laughs> That's what it is. That's a stupid bitch. Seriously? And Michael starts Seriously? grabbing her, so she Why? puts Why her foot on the gas trying to get the hell out of there. Meanwhile, bro just standing <laughs> there on the phone, offering up no help. Who the hell could he be possibly talking hmm. to right now? They're all dead. And that's when she jumps in the passenger seat. So Michael slaps his hand on the window <laughs> and she was like, and gets the hell up out of there. So he crawls inside and steals the car. And all I could think when I was younger was, who the hell taught this nigga how to drive? Hmm. Bro been in Arkham <laughs> Asylum since he was a child. So to whoever taught him, lock his ass up. <laughs> bro was definitely in on it after this we cut to Lori Stroh and ironically her parents are the new owners of the old Myers place she's a way better child than me knowing what he did now there is no way in hell I'm going there she drops off the keys and when she's walking away Michael appears in the background staring outside and at that moment he decided that he was gonna start an eternal beef with her and as little bro leaves and she starts walking away he appears behind her breathing hard as hell you don't hear this big ass man behind you I be turning around quick as hell whenever some Somebody's behind me. Diddy's in jail and I'm still paranoid. They get called lacking at five nights at Diddy's. After this, we fast forward to a place where you Hell will nah. never catch Floyd Mayweather at because Lori is in class and she looks out the window to see a straight demon looking at her from across the street and she puts her head down thinking, oh, maybe. She looks so freaking young, man. James and Curtis, my God. I'm just seeing things so young. looks back up, but he's still standing there staring dead at her. And this is why I'm happy to be a fellow non-swimmer because I would have been in that whole like. <laughs> Boy, get your dumb ass out of here. <laughs> you know? But after she answers the question, she looks up and sees the car and Michael going. Like, bro, you don't find that suspicious. suspicious. 
You won't find that suspicious. Suspicious. Meanwhile, little Tommy at school, and they giving him that Disney Channel bully treatment. I never understood bullying. How you mad because I'm ugly? Niggas ain't out here shoving Lizzo in lockers. Wait, and that's when one of the kids bullying Tommy runs into Michael. Little bro just dodged death by a literal hair. After this, Michael starts moving like Diddy, following after this pubescent boy, realizing he not even worth it for real. And then he drives off. If Michael knew how spicy he was talking in Halloween Kills, he would have been going that night. Meanwhile, Dr. Loomis is on the side of the road on the phone when he sees out the corner of his eye an abandoned truck and Michael's hospital gown. And as the camera pans, we can see that Mike done greased the mechanic in 4K. And not only that, bro done took his fit. Michael was the original YN. After I heard he escaped, I would have been out of Haddon Field that second. But it seems like everybody in this town unaware. Dr. Loomis got Forrest Gump tendencies. Bro was trying to keep it on a low. Now look, y'all all about to die. Because we cut to Lori and her friends walking home from school. And while her friend lungs are getting more and more relatable to Akon by the second, Michael Damn. come through in the same car and Lori's like, I know that ain't what I it is. Her friend yells out that speed kills. Bitch must have never heard of Dominic <laughs> Toretto. And he stomps on her brakes. And she was like, damn, bro ain't never heard of a joke. She out here playing with all of their lives. The type of friend you cannot be around for too long. <laughs> And then he spins <laughs> off, again, dodging death by a hair. But as they walk around the corner, Michael's standing behind a bush. I'm crying. At this point in the original storyline, they wasn't even supposed to be siblings. Bro just seen her at the house and decided she had to go. He ducks back off and Lori tells her friend to look. And she starts trolling, running over to him to press him. But he's already gone. She clearly doesn't care about her life because pressing Mike is insane. She tells Lori, oh, he wants to take you out. And she comes around to see that nobody's standing there. That's when her friend hit her with that. This nigga's crazy. So after seeing all that, Lori has the bright idea to go home and chill. And when she does, she goes to look out the window to see Michael staring at her. I don't know what to be scarier at night, him or the king of pop. And then he just disappears in broad daylight. She thinks shit's sweet out here. Have some self-awareness. You think I'ma come around Black Boy Max without her breathing a toothbrush? And luckily, her friend calls her and tells her she about to pick her up soon. And she does. Meanwhile, Dr. Loomis have bro take him to Judith's grave. And when he gets there, he sees that the entire headstone is gone. This motherfucker done desecrated his poor sister's grave bro has no shame she must have been giving him the big brother treatment as a kid because what did she do to deserve all of this and that's why when we cut to Lori and Andy my son following them he out here moving like a college coach recruiting kids at the right age of 10 and that's when they pull up to the scene of a robbery where they took Halloween mask rope and a couple of knives but this genius is like uh it's probably just a bunch of kids <laughs> little did bro know that was gonna be the last time he seen his daughter should have been thinking more clearly now she did and then they dip out dr loomis walks up to the sheriff and tells him he has some important information to tell him and this part really had me crying because although mike is an evil serial killer a bad driver he is not because while dr loomis is displaying his stevie wonder type awareness michael in the back driving 10 and 2 and looking both ways a serial killer only obeying the laws of traffic is crazy but michael follows them all the way to their baby sitter's house but he doesn't want Lori yet he's gonna save her for later walking up to the house annie's babysitting and she's walking right in front of him look bro the cover of halloween isn't stopping me from seeing this man they treating this nigga like he casper the friendly ghost yes. don't you know that i can see you yes. meanwhile all of this is happening loomis is back at the myers house bro is really sitting there thinking he was gonna come back they just <laughs> handing out phds to anybody but mike is a man on a mission watching annie get undressed bro been locked up since he was six years old he must be trying to see something and while he's back there creeping and the dog walks up and he does the most diabolical shit ever. Never mind. Because when we cut, we see that this nigga done killed yeah. the dog. Lock yep. his ass up. Lock his ass, ass up. up. Right. Yeah, it's raps. Lock bro up and throw away the key. He is truly evil incarnate. Meanwhile, across the street, Tommy looks out the window and sees Michael. I know little bro hard drop straight Nike when they seen John Morant win live. So he starts pleading to Lori that he's seeing the boogeyman. And I instantly would have put two and two together. But I can clearly see that when these niggas put two and two together, they get five. Because she <laughs> looks out the window and tells little bro he's just seeing things. We cut back to Annie talking on the phone and Mike is right behind her. And bro was... She looks so familiar. Ain't that Jennifer Grey who played first Bureau sister in Dirt Dancing with Patrick Swayze? Is that her? She looks so familiar, man. I was on the phone talking freaky, telling her that he was trying to do what the diddler was doing to those at the parties. And oh, she dang. was down. So she tells the girl she's babysitting that she has a date, but she like, nah, I'm trying to watch the movie. So she tells her that she can make it to where she can watch it and be at little Tommy's <laughs> house. And she was for it. A grown ass woman setting up two children. She has no shame. They walk across the street to Tommy's house and Michael pops up. Bro was rubbing his 
his hands. He got all of his victims in the same house yep. now, but he decides to buy his time because he's trying to send a message. And he broke it. And then she leaves to go pick up all, but she isn't getting far because when she walks to the car, she realizes that her car is locked. So she walks back in the house, grabs the key, and turns back around to go outside. But when she gets in the garage, she pulls on the handle and it's open. But she has that Ray Charles type of awareness, <laughs> realizing late that the door was unlocked yep. and it's hot as hell in there. And yep. that's when Michael pops out the back, trying to choke her to death with one hand. Who bro think he is? The first super soldier? <laughs> but she in there putting up a fight, kicking and screaming, but he in the back like, for a bitch. Whipping out the <laughs> secondary straight OJ and he cuts her throat. Damn. Going to her what happens when you get a French Montana feature. Killing her <laughs> instantly. Making her fall in the most loony two way possible. <laughs> we cut so back over to possible. Lori, Tommy, and Lindsay. And Tommy tries scaring Lindsay. But when he turns around he sees Michael carrying Annie's dead body. And Lil Bro starts screaming that the boogeyman's outside. <laughs> but Lori hit him with that. How many genders do you think there should be like realistically <laughs> ballpark estimation? You said ballpark? ballpark? Yeah. I mean you play baseball at a ballpark. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? How you gonna play inside? Might break a window. Straight up gaslighting on little bro. And Michael ain't standing for all that snitching. Bro waited 40 years for his get back. He is insane. It's Meanwhile, this is happening. Linda and Bob start talking about how they gonna sneak past Lindsay and how they gonna rip each other's clothes off. And then he says this. Then we rip Lindsay's clothes off. And I was like, hold up. I know I'm not it's tripping. Balls. Ain't that the little girl? This is a sick nigga. Right? I could have went my entire life <laughs> without hearing that. Fuck Michael. Put this nigga in a super max prison. Yeah, they go in the house running straight to their death. Yes. And while they on the couch getting freaky, Michael in the back camping. He the type of guy to be like, I'm not even camping for real. But post it up like these. After this spawn <laughs> camper got done giving her the best two strokes of her life, he goes to get her a beer. Keep in mind, these are high schoolers drinking beer and smoking right. cigarettes. Right. These boys wasn't making it past 20 anyways. Right. While she's upstairs chilling, R. Kelly Jr. is in here. Because he gets the beer out the fridge and sees the door opening. And right there, I would have been going. That's them palm color activities. Because black people, I don't act like that. He walks over trying to scope out the scenery, calling out for Annie, but my boy, she's already gone. He starts rummaging around looking for somebody that he thinks is trying to scare him, and he <laughs> opens the wrong door, because Michael pops out, strangling yep. him against the wall, and lifts his ass off the ground. Got his feet dangling like the Shea Frost on any chair, and then he pulls out the secondary again, stabbing him in the chest, hanging him on the wall damn. like a damn coat rack, and bro just steps back, admiring his kill. This nigga is crazy. Yep. I don't know what I expected from a person who literally gutted a dog and ate it and left it for Dr. Loomis to find. He is a sick individual. Linda Von KKK member. While Shorty yes. upstairs chilling, Michael comes in with bros glasses and a damn sheet on. A killer with a sense of humor. This is sick work. She starts flirting with him, but he just standing there. The type of nigga you cannot take on a two man because he'll be scaring the hoes away. She starts getting mad because he's not answering her and goes to call Lori. So Mike creeps up behind her and he starts strangling her with a phone cord while Lori on the other line. She on the other line thinking it's Andy getting clapped. So she hangs up, but she starts getting worried, thinking, damn, maybe little bro is right, and decides to go over there, and when she walks upstairs and goes into the room, she sees Annie stretched out damn. on the bed, in the Caleb City boat, <laughs> while Mike has his entire sister head sewn over her head, mimicking her death, and she shook. She can't believe her best friend got the Tupac meet and greet in 4K. <laughs> and as she backs up, Drake starts swinging back and forth Ooh. behind her. So she runs the highs in a corner and the cabinet opens up and Linda tucked in there looking up at the queen. Psych! She down there asking King Von to tell her one of his infamous stories. And Lori decides, hey, this is the perfect corner to cry in. Meanwhile, Michael is waiting in that corner rubbing his hands. He out here putting bush campers to shame. And while she's walking away, he stabs her in the shoulder. That plot armor putting in overtime. You can't convince me that this was a actual attempt at killing right, her and then she falls down the stairs and that? because she has D-Rose type knees she can't walk correctly anymore and Michael starts walking her down but she can't get away cause bro done blocked off every single exit in the house if I was Lori I'd be like you can have it I don't even want to live that bad for real and she must have been listening because she waits for Michael to get all the way in front of her for her to break the glass and get the hell out of there mm. the way she was moving in this movie you couldn't convince me this was the same person going head to head with Mike she runs mm. all the way to her neighbor's house screaming at them to help her so they turn on the lights and look outside and they started treating her like d1 athletes be treating black women and turning them shits right off can't even blame them oh god i'm doing the same thing best you can do in the halloween universe is to avoid Lori stroke like the plague she runs all the way back to the house and michael just now walking towards her me personally the only way michael myers is killing me is if i magically become rohan murphy she Damn. don't want it as bad as me as michael Damn. is walking across the street shit took hella long she yells to tommy to open the door before he comes and just in the nick of time he opens the door little bro is really trolling rubbing his eyes like he was 
sleep. Yes. Game recognized game. I used to do the same shit as yes. a kid. She tells little bro to go upstairs. And not only does Michael have immortality, durability, and super strength, but <laughs> this nigga is also a walking EMP because somehow he turns off all the cell towers. And damn. she finally realizing that, damn, this nigga OP. And she looks out the window realizing that he's in a house and decides, fuck it, I'ma just lay on the floor. And clearly this entire cast has some Forrest Gump tendencies. Yes. I remember being 12 watching this like, you niggas is just retarded. <laughs> and that's when she grabs some shit my granny will use looking around to catch him lacking. And she does. Turning around, stabbing him in the neck, got my son glitching. And then he just drops. This is sick work. She got my goat in the Caleb City post again. Yes. And she takes a big sigh of relief and just chills on the couch. My son get around Lori and turn into a stress <laughs> scrub. This is like getting a feature from fucking French Montana. Prepare for that shit to go certified paper plate. Lori goes upstairs to tell Tommy and Lizzie that there's nothing to be scared of. Cause she killed him. And he looking at her type crazy. Telling her you can't kill the boogeyman. And Lori looking at little bro like. Check him out y'all. He's dick riding. Look. He got the dick all in his mouth. Look. And she turns Damn. around to see that little bro was not lying. As she puts them in the bathroom. And while she's scrambling around trying to find a room to hide in. Mike just walking them down. They had to nerf bro somehow. He got immortality, durability, and super strength. They had to give him raw weight type speed too. And that's when she hides in a closet. Tying a rope around the doorknob like that's gonna keep him out. Is everybody in this universe suffering? from Shamar type tendencies he walks in the room and walks straight to the closet fuck they give him echo location too and he punches his hand through and Lori decides it's the perfect time to make him more and more relatable to Fetty Wap grabbing <laughs> the hanger making Damn. a knife out of it and while he looking around in a closet poking him in the eye so he drops the knife and she picks it up stabbing him in the chest with it laying my boy out for the third time today and while he's on the ground she walks over to the bathroom and tells the kids to run while she just stays there chilling I know a crackhead around the corner who has more self awareness hmm. this is it's wild. And that's when Michael rises in the background. I'm crying. This nigga think he the undertaker. The kids <laughs> run outside yelling and screaming. And Dr. Loomis, who was camping at the Myers house for no reason, knows Mike is in there causing mayhem. Meanwhile, Lori gets up and Mike gets up right behind her. My son got sneak 100 on lock. I ain't seen a nigga this OB since Chris Brown. Broken scene, dance, play basketball, box. And he starts damn, walking her down. Damn. And clearly she I wasn't expecting that. I wasn't expecting that. Oh, wow. Box. That box. They got. Oh, man. I was not expecting that, man. She has some Helen Keller type tendencies because she can't hear a thing behind her, allowing Mike to grab her and strangle her. So she grabs his shiesty, taking it off. And I thought Mike was chopped, but look at bro. Nigga decided being a serial killer was the best life for him. Put down the mask, go pick up some poses or something. He puts the mask back on and Dr. Loomis blicks him and runs over to him. But bro is just standing there. This is a scary sight. Somebody help him, please. And that's when Dr. Loomis dumps five shots into Michael, making him hit this Looney Tune ass fall onto the ground. As it appears he's dead, but that's too nope. easy. Because after Dr. Loomis checks on Lori, he goes back outside to Don't. see that this nigga Michael is gone. Yeah, part two comes through. All right. I did saw one of his vids. Um, it's the, the reboot, the Halloween 2018 reboot. So I'm excited to see that one. <laughs> Overall, that we recap cast for all oh, this was funny. This was funny. It's it's been such such a long time since I've seen the original Halloween. Such a long time. It's crazy. It is crazy, man. But yeah, that Chris Brown jump, nah. Damn. I wasn't expecting that like, damn, that was dark. That was that was dark as hell. But um, I gotta see who's the actress who played A.D. Brackett, like I said before, Jennifer Grey. Is that really her? Hold on. Okay, it is not Jennifer Grey, it is Nancy Keys. And by the way, this is actually Jamie Lee Curtis' first movie debut. Wow, man. Hell of a debut from Jamie Lee Curtis. Wow, this is her first movie ever in her career. Her long standing career. I mean, Jesus, that's crazy. But overall, WWE recap cast, we have great work with these Halloween recaps. I have more of them going to watch very soon, y'all, but I don't have the schedule yet. So, Hot Squad, this is going to be my only Hot Banger recap I got today. I just got from work. I am actually feeling a little pretty much tired from work. I was going to do my Equalizer recap from Sensei today, but I'm going to do it Saturday plus with all the Hot Banger trailers. So it's going to be a hell of a Hot Banger day by Saturday. So Hot Squad, that's my conclusion of my Hot Banger recap reaction to Casper's Halloween recap, the original Halloween, of course. So if you this, please hit the like button, leave me a like to me, comment and share your thoughts. How old was you when you saw the first Halloween for the first time ever? And do um, you watch it every Halloween? And from going from the worst to the best, what is your favorite Halloween movies in general? So I'll squad, this your man's Horace Hot sign off for today. I will see y'all this weekend for more Hot Banger recaps and Hot Banger trailers coming this Saturday. So I'll squad, safe out the sky, peace out, have a great day, Hot Squad forever.